Hello, so we're back and uh, this time I will be showing you how to design a pawn and a rook in Tinkercad. So the assignment is to uh, 3D model and 3D print uh, chess pieces. So here's a few that I've made already and we'll recreate them. So I'll take you step by step and learn how to start with this one here and make the pawn, turn the pawn into a rook and add a little crown to it. So you should have um, had experience with me in class doing this, but it never hurts to go over the process again. And then I'll challenge you to design me a knight and the following characters in the chess pieces. So here we go. We'll start with this piece and I'll challenge myself to do it all within the next few minutes here. And if I speed up, I uh, go too quick or too slow, you can um, advance the video or go back at any time. First thing that I've done here for the pawn was start with a cylinder. So I'm going to drag the cylinder over and reduce the size, the height down. You can click and drag this down to the, the height that you need. I'm going to go by eye, I'm going to scroll in, zoom in using the scroll wheel on my mouse. And if you click on the scroll wheel and drag to the left here, you should be able to pan just like so. And the right click, right click on your mouse and hold, it'll orbit around. You can also click on this box and you can orbit around your objects. I often use these tools as you can see, just to match. So I'm gonna go three millimeters in height. And the sides here, I can play around with that. So I can smoothen it, make it as smooth as possible with 64 sides. And then on the pond, there was a bevel. So if I zoom in, and I can add a nice bevel. You can adjust how many segments there are. Now I've been asked, uh, if you have these settings on each object, only some have these this dialog box that comes up. So click on the various objects to see what options come up with. Uh, I like that. So we've got a beveled edge. Okay, so the base of my pawn is created. Then I will use a cone. So scroll down, grab a cone. And anytime I'm scaling an object, I hold shift and I go to either corner. It doesn't matter which one you, you click, uh, just hold shift when you do it so it scales it proportionately. Then I like to go to the top view, click and drag to select both objects and use the align tools. So these align tools are really helpful. You'll see me use them often. So that centers it like that. And they're perfectly centered, although my cone is too small. So I'm going to scale this up. But again, I'm going to hold shift and click and drag up till I'm happy with that. But my base protrudes through the cylinder that I just created. So I'm going to lift this triangle or cone up and notice this little black triangle, you have to click and drag it to lift it up into the air. Now, if I wanted to drop it, you can hit D. D will drop it to the base, but I want it slightly above. And you'll notice it snaps like this. Often what I'll do is I'll go under my snap grid and I'll change it to 0.1 of a millimeter or sometimes I'll take, I'll take it off. But point one allows me a little bit more freedom to adjust my objects and, and where they align. I like it there. In fact, I'm gonna drop it in a little bit. That's good. I'll zoom out and I'll click on that cone and I'll rise that. There we go. And I'm going by eye. I'm just trying to mimic what's here. So. If you were to do the exact same size, I have 26.8 millimeters there. You can click on an object, click on the value and type in uh, whatever value you needed. So if you need 26.8, you type, in, type it in. 
Same with my base here. This is 20 by 20. It should be default from that cylinder that I dragged in. And from here, I want an extra little ridge. This is just a detail, but you can do that using the torus. So if I click and drag the torus in, here I have step, sides, tube, radius. So I believe if I just reduce the amount of sides, I get that detail. And I can play with the radius of it in here, or you can click in the corner and hold shift and that will scale the radius as well. So now I will, well, I know that my uh, radius on the base is 20. So if I just typed in 20 and 20, hit enter. And let's say we want to center everything. I click and drag to select all those objects. Click on my line tool, center it there and there but now it's hidden it's it's well actually it's not hidden it's underneath so if i click on that object i find that triangle and i raise it up so i'm gonna want it coming up the cone so it has a base a little ridge that comes down a bevel it goes up the cone and then another little ridge that goes out and back in so it's just a little detail so that's good. To complete my pawn, I need one more cone and a sphere. So I'm going to grab the cone, drag that in. First thing I'll do is I'll spin it around. So if you spin it from the inside of the radius here, it snaps to, what what is it, 15 degree increments. So this is really handy. Or if you click and drag to the outside, then you can refine your angles to one degree. So I like to go inside, make sure it's 180 degrees, and then click on the outside of that shape, scale it down. Let's say, I'm just going by eye here, 8.2, raise that up. You can place it roughly, but what I like to do is select outside of that shape, click and drag with your left mouse click, and then use your align tools. And I like viewing it from the, a top angle and click those two center buttons. And when they're grayed out, that means they've been centered. So now I have a cone inverted upside down and I will need a sphere to finish it off to finish my pawn. Now, you can custom design your own pawn. You can change the style, the look of it. In fact, I encourage it. But to get started and to learn, it's always fun to follow a tutorial and get to know the software, feel comfortable, then start messing around. And in fact, that's what I'm going to ask you to do once you do these two objects. Center that and that. The very last thing I will do is I want to make sure that this thing is at 36 millimeters in height. So I could drag things up, but what I prefer doing here is I'm going to uh, simply select everything and click and drag to drag this up. The only thing that this will do though is it'll affect the sphere, it'll affect your cone. So if you don't want your sphere to look egg-shaped, you wouldn't do it this way. You could undo by going Control Z and you can lift this up and you can adjust each object to achieve a certain height for your, your pawn. And what I would do is I would just use a box, put it next to it as a guide, and type in 36 for millimeters. And that could be your guide as to how tall your object is. And in fact, 
I'm right there. So I'm going to use this. So I would be right at 36 millimeters at that height. So if I group this now, so once you select everything, hit the group button. Now my computer is being a little bit slow. There it goes. And I'm at 35.8. So I, would, I could edit that value to being 36. And now I know I have a 36 millimeter in, in height pawn and the base should have maintained 20 by 20, which it did. Now, I've got a second pawn here. If I want to use this one, I can create my rook with this. So I'm going to copy it. You can do control C and then control V. It'll duplicate it or you can hold Alt on your keyboard and click and drag, and that will also duplicate. This one I'm gonna rotate. I'm gonna try and do it as quick as I can here so you can do the same steps. So I'm gonna steal that shape. I'm gonna invert it, and I'm gonna add a little crown to it, just like what you see over here. So I'm gonna take that same shape. If you got it, reuse it. You don't have to reinvent the wheel each time. So I'm going to use that, select these both these shapes now, align them, oh, and be careful not to select other objects on your work plane. I'm going to align them centered. There we go. And I will raise the height of this object. There we go. And I'll reduce the size of it. I guess I sh I'll do undo. I double clicked on the object so it ungrouped it. So I'll go control Z to undo. Z again. Click on this object. Hold shift. Scale it down. You might find yourself doing this process a few times. And because this ball is protruding through, what I could do here is I could punch out, take the top off of this pawn completely. So if I want to do that, I can take that box. It's a hole already. And if I bring this up, I'm just going to cut the top end of that object right off. So the minute that I group that together, it'll knock off the top. And it'll make it a little easier for me to merge those two shapes. I'll align them again. And I'll, ink, I'll rise that. There we go. So now I have almost everything done. Just need to add a little crown. Now there are uh, generated shapes that you can use. And if you go into uh, generated shapes, basic shapes, I believe it's page 13 of, give me a moment here, if I go to all shape generators and scroll, I believe it's page 13, so you might have to click this a few times. So page 13 is circular array. So make sure you pay attention, page 13 in Shape Generators All, Circular Array. Now if you click on that, it'll create this, these little boxes. So this could be your crown. Now, this is nice and editable because you can adjust how many copies there are of the cube. 
So you can add how many little blocks there are. You can add detail to your crown, uh, the angles. So play around with these different options. I'm going to scale this down. Again, I'm holding shift. And I'll zoom in and bring this in here. I'll rise this object. I'll scale it down. I'm going to make it slightly inset. Raise this up. And I will center these again. And those are a different color. So if I want to make them orange, I'll go to a solid here, paint it orange. And that's all right. I have a crown. This could be a rook. And if I want to edit the crown a little bit, I can edit the copies. So it's nice because it'll still edit live as you go. And I have one other function here. See if I can pull it up. It's being, it's hidden, but um, you can change the angle of each one as well. So you could have half. Yeah, so have fun with this. I'm gonna undo that. I find that too many copies, so I'm going to adjust this one more time. Oh, and if you want to experiment with the shape, you can make them circles. See if it'll demonstrate. Uh, triangles and custom profile, and you can edit the shape right here. So these, these are a lot of fun to play with. There's so many different uh, custom shapes that you can use in the shape generators. So explore your options, see what you can work with. It might even help you uh, come up with ideas, especially when you're challenged to design a, uh, a knight. So once you've got that done, you can now move on to designing a knight. Now this one's an example that I imported in and you can tell it's all just basic geometry. It's all shapes cut out of a cube here. And my challenge to myself would be to recreate it. And I found this Art Deco chess piece in Thingiverse. And here's the example. I was able to download it under the Thing files. And I wouldn't copy it, like just strictly download it and use it. I would challenge myself to recreate these chess pieces in Tinkercad. So that'll be my next challenge to you. You've seen some of the basics of me working in the other two pieces, the pawn and the rook, and get creative. Come up with your own style, uh, have fun with it, make me a whole chess set. So thanks for this lesson, and uh, we'll see you in class. Take care.